Let's take a look at some double angle identities. Suppose we want to find an expression for sine of 2x in terms of sine of x and cosine of x. 2x is simply x plus x, and so I can express sine of 2x as sine of x plus x. This allows us to use the sum identity for sine. Sine of u plus v equals sine of u times cosine of v plus cosine of u times sine of v. What this expression is suggesting is that both u and v equal x. And so from the sum identity we get sine of x times cosine of x plus cosine of x times sine of x. But those two terms are really just the same thing. So we have 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. In a similar way, we can try to come up with a double angle identity for cosine. I can think of cosine of 2x as cosine of x plus x. And then if we think about the angle sum identity for cosine, Recall it's cosine of u times cosine of v minus sine of u times sine of v. And in a similar way, if we think of u as equaling x and v as also equaling x, we get cosine of x times cosine of x minus sine of x times sine of x. Well, this can be simplified as cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And so that gives us a double angle identity for cosine. The double angle identity for cosine is actually a little bit flexible here because if we have cosine squared of x, sine squared of x, those things may remind us a little bit of the Pythagorean identity. Importantly, you know, this is not the same as the Pythagorean identity. So this is not going to be equal to 1 because I have a minus sign in between those terms instead of a plus sign. But what I can do is I can think of sine squared of x, I can think of that from the Pythagorean identity, that's equal to 1 minus cosine squared. And so I could, in this expression, I could replace the sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. And that gives me an alternate form for the double angle identity for cosine. Distributing the minus sign, I get cosine squared x minus 1 plus cosine squared x. So this is the same as 2 cosine squared x minus 1. In a similar way, we can think of cosine squared x as equal to 1 minus sine squared x. And so either going back to this expression, or we could really just kind of start from here, and I could replace the cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared x. And that gives us, distributing the 2, gives me 2 minus 2 times sine squared x minus 1. And I can combine this minus 1 and the positive 2 to get a positive 1, minus 2 times sine squared x. So we have some double angle identities. Sine of 2x can be written in terms of sine of x and cosine of x. Sine of 2x is 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. And cosine of 2x can be written in a few different ways, as cosine squared x minus sine squared x, as 2 times cosine squared x minus 1, and as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So let's use the double angle identity for sine to answer the following question. Suppose we know theta is an angle in the second quadrant, and suppose also that sine of theta is one-third. We'd like to find an exact value for sine of two theta. We know from the double angle identity that sine of two theta equals two times sine of theta times cosine of theta. And we have the, a value for sine of theta, so we need to find a value for cosine of theta. 
Since theta is in the second quadrant, we know that the angle looks a little something like this, and I can draw a reference triangle for it with a hypotenuse of 1 and a y coordinate of 3. We don't know what the x coordinate is, but I can figure that out from the Pythagorean theorem because 1 squared plus x squared has to equal 3 squared, and so x has to equal the square root of 8. Because we're in the second quadrant, I'm going to take the negative square root of 8. Uh, I could also think of that as negative 2 times the square root of 2, because the square root of 8 has a, a nice perfect square factor of 4. This means that cosine of theta is equal to negative 2 times the square root of 2 over 3, the x-coordinate over the hypotenuse. And so sine of 2 theta equals 2 times 1 third times negative 2 times the square root of 3 over 3, which, simplifying that a little bit, I can think of this as 2 over 1. So it belongs up in the numerator, and I can multiply 2 times 1 times negative 2 two square roots of two, sorry, that should be a two. Um, this would become negative four square roots of two. Right? The square root of two comes from um, the cosine value we just found, uh, and divided by nine. And so that would be an exact expression for this, for this uh, sine value, sine of two theta. We can check our work a little bit if we think about where this angle is, because um, you know, one third is a little bit less than the square root of two over two. I know this is a little bit beyond uh, theta has to be a little bit beyond 135 degrees. And so, if I double that, let's think about which quadrant we'd be in. Well, we're between 135 theta is between 135 degrees and 180 degrees. And so, two theta has to be between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. And so 2 theta would have to be in quadrant 4 uh, somewhere. So our double angle would maybe look somewhere like that. This would be 2 theta. And so we can just kind of check our work and think about what sine of 2 theta should be. And, and because we're in quadrant 4, we know that it's going to be negative. And so we can feel a little bit more comfortable with that, with that expression as our answer. So let me end the video with a question. I encourage you to take a few minutes to try to figure out for an angle theta in quadrant 3, suppose that we know that cosine of theta is negative 3 fifths. Try to find an exact value for cosine of 2 theta. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.